Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, man, is going to be returning to the Bellator cage for the first time since November of last year, so 11 months away from the cage. Ricky Rainey, who is going to be taking on Gilbert Smith. Ricky, what has been going on the last 11 months? Oh, uh, straight up training, man. Straight up training and um, trying to teach so I can uh, even further understand my technique. Because usually from teaching, you can learn a lot more. So I've been teaching and training. That's what I've been doing the whole time. What have you learned about, you know, what what has teaching been able to do for you in terms of your own uh, mixed martial arts journey? Um, I feel like for me teaching people that help me to uh, get more focused on the details of the techniques that I learned all through the years. And um, it's just basically passing it on. And the more that I pass on, the more knowledge gets reflected towards me. And, you know, I just absorb everything that I know will work for me and I just bring it to the cage with me. On the focusing on details, is that maybe something through coaching maybe you realize that, uh, you weren't putting too much attention on that. Um, yeah, I was. I will actually recently. I've changed my whole my whole camp up since my last one. I've uh, sort of got a new coach and new management and stuff like that. So everything is basically new, getting ran, getting ran very smoothly for me. So my new my new coach is helping me with my details, making me work on angles more. You know, instead of just staying in the pocket like I used to do as a boxer style. It's more uh, more angles and more movement uh, set up set up attacks. Who's your new coach? Uh, Jeff Demo. Jeff well, Demo. Yep he uh, he trains a few UFC fighters and me and some upcoming people. What what made you decide to that you need to make a change uh, in terms of, of the coaching aspect? Was it something that maybe? Um, because of, of the the Cheetah Injury Kawani defeat, that maybe you realized that you need to make some changes. Um, no, I was sort of already on the way to changes, but the fact that that went like it did, it caused a little bit of friction between me and uh, people I was dealing with at the time. So instead of just instead of just you know dwelling on it and becoming you know upset with each other because we helped each other get so far, I just figured I should just you know move on and still stay cordial and as good as possible. You know, I don't want business to come between because I was friends with these people before and i don't want business to be a reason for you know falling out but you know as you get as you grow in, in anything as you grow in anything you know changes have to come so you know i just sort of i knew everything that they were teaching me and it was very good stuff but you know i just had to develop more to to reach my goals and of course, the fight here against Gilbert Smith in Memphis, Tennessee, Bellator 162, a part of that preliminary card. Would it be wrong to say that this could be almost essentially a classic MMA matchup, grappler versus striker, where you're expecting Gilbert to try to close that distance, make this a grappling fight, where but you know, but in reality, where you want to keep this at range and make this a you know a kickboxing matchup? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a typical, yeah. We both have our own strengths, but I'm not going to put it past him that he's going to come in there and try to punch me in my head, you know? I'm not going to be just sitting there waiting for him to grab me because they figure the things happen and styles make fights, so we just have to get out there and see what happens. You know, sometimes you see two wrestlers against each other and they never wrestle. All they do is strike. And then you see two strikers, they so worry about getting hit that they end up being grapplers, you know? So... You know, it's, just a, uh, it's, a, it's a basic, you know, grappler versus striker, but I got to incorporate my skill set to make him overcompensate and then, you know, take advantage of that. You know, he obviously he came into Bellator. He, he's coming in off uh, that decision loss earlier this year against uh, Fernando Gonzalez. Did you see the same uh, in preparations for this fight? Do you basically see the same Gilbert Smith that's been out there for this, this past couple fights, or or do you see a fighter that uh, you know is evolving and he he's got a brand new skill set? Um, I mean, I see him still as a strong grappler. A lot of people don't tend to go away from their strengths. They um, at least in the fight where they're comfortable with, you know. So if he's comfortable as a grappler, he's probably going to eventually go back to that, just like I'm not going to be comfortable laying on my back. This is not what I do, you know. So um, I'm sure if he trains, we don't train to just stay the same. So I'm going to take it as he's developing 
new skill sets to take it to the fight just as I am. Does it bother you at all if people just look at yourself as just a striker and, and they don't think about uh, the rest of your mixed martial arts uh, routine? Oh, nah, nah. It's okay. You know, some of the best uh, – it's good that I still have some hidden things that people don't know about, you know, because, you know, you can always study film on my striking and all my stuff, but you don't have to fight like hell to take me down. When you take me down, I mean, I am I am like a second degree, second degree in my purple belt, so – I've been doing it. I done beat black belts in, in uh, tournaments and all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, I got, I got, I still got other things. I'm not just one sided, but whatever people want to think, man, you can't, you can't really change nobody's opinion. <laughs> How often do you uh, participate in grappling tournaments? Um, the last one I did was, uh, last tournament I did was, was it last year? I think I, I did the Naga. I won the Naga in 15 and 16, and I won some other tournaments, uh, New Breed and stuff. So it was like, uh, no, it's 2015, 14 to 15. So 2015 was the last time I did a grappling tournament. You know, we mentioned here at the beginning of this interview, you know, first fight uh, in 11 months. Do you Are you a believer at all in cage or, or do you think that's kind of a mental thing? Um, I am a believer in cage rust, but... The fact that I've been training so hard because I was getting ready for the June bout, I was on point, ready for that bout, you know, and I felt good about it. But I don't feel like I got ring rust because I didn't really take no time off. I still do hard cardio. I still did, you know, helping get my teammates ready for fights. So it always kept me on my toes so I didn't get my ass up in practice, you know. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm going to have ring rust because I've been going pretty balls to the wall the whole time. So. Uh, you know, helping out your it, teammates. It could definitely be a mental thing. Yeah, I mean, helping out your teammates, and I'm sure you you probably corner them in their fights as well. When you're when you're cornering a guy, do you learn something about yourself because you're able to uh, see a different view of the fight? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I can watch a fight all the time, and I can look at people's foot placement and what they're doing and what what they about to throw. People are always like, "Why the hell you know that's going to happen?" I'm just like, I can just see it. And luckily, I just I study a lot. I help my teammates out. I study their field more than I study my opponents because my coach helps me with my opponents, and I help them with their opponents. You know, so it's um I, I'm able to see it. I, I really do think I, I did some commentating for uh, Fight Lab down here a few times, and you know I'm just able to see. I'm able to see it. If if I need to see it, I can see it due to the fact that I've been doing it so long. So that's a blessing. How how often do you go back and look at your own fights to do a little self evaluation of your own self to, uh, you know, maybe to kind of sit there and say, well, if I was fighting myself, this is what I do. Do you do that a lot? Um, if I fight myself, uh, no, nah, I look I look at my fights a few times after after they're done. You know, if it's a if it's a loss, I look at it and evaluate myself definitely. But um, with the wins. Yeah, I yeah, you're right. Yeah, I evaluate myself a lot, but, you know, I just don't try to dwell on it. I just look at what my problems are, and I try to constantly poke at those until I feel comfortable enough to keep continue going. But um, to strategize against myself, I never really try to think of that, you know. I, but um, I'm sure now that you said it, I, I'll probably look at that. But, yeah, um, when I fought uh, on that pay-per-view, uh, Bell told 120. No, my opponent was calling out things that he saw, and I never noticed them. But then when I heard him say it, then I'm like, shit. Once I heard him say it, and then I went back and tried to correct those things. So, you know, any kind of constructive criticism, I take criticism because I want to grow. So, anything that I hear, I look at it and I try to improve it. And if I see it, I definitely improve it. I know you you never want to lose, and guys talk about those lessons you you, you learn defeats, and they're they're the the lessons that stick with you. Is it one of those things where you go back and you look at that Michael Page fight and say, if he's not calling out what I was going to do, maybe I would not have realized it after that fight. Nope, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have realized it at all. Nope, sure didn't. And you know, I still see that fight as yeah, I lost, but man, I grew so much from that fight. In ways of movement and fighting loosely, thinking I had to hit everybody with a hundred percent. Nah, you can hit somebody with thirty percent in small gloves, and they'll fold. 
you just gotta hit them right, you know. So I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot more, I think, from losing that fight. Just like most people, you learn a lot more from losing than winning, even though no one wants to lose. And final thing in terms of uh, the fight here against Gilbert Smith, what, what do you gotta do to beat him? Um, what I gotta do here is I gotta uh, basically keep my movement, not stay heavy on my front foot, and keep my range. Um, I'm, I'm, probably, I'm surely gonna have the longer range, so I basically gotta pick my shots and angle off, um, and you know stop the takedowns. If I stop a few takedowns, get them tired, then we can start working, and then we'll go from there. Ricky, as always, man, appreciate time. Good luck here at Bellator 162. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your time.